Greetings, exiles. And that's my favorite sound. Fake tink. Now that's a good tink. It's not a tink, but it's a pretty good belt. Very nice. Just what I need. And another good belt. Well, why not? I think I got a good bait intro and we can move to the main topic. As you may have guessed by the amount of tinks, it's time for magic find. In the last video, I stopped with this particular gear. Now let's make a magic find hero from this build. First, let's change our boots to Goldworm. Best in slot for MF. Next is rings, and of course it's the Venter's Gamble. This is not a very cheap Venter's Gamble, and you will have to pay about 20 divine orbs for this ring. But I will show you a little trick. If you change the item's quantity from 10 to 8 and slightly change life, the cost is reduced to 2 divine orbs and the price becomes more acceptable. You can say that you will lose 4% of item's quantity, but it's really not that big of a deal. Let's take a look at this table, which was made by smart people from Discord Prohibited Library. In my build, I planned 50% item's quantity, and that means that I will find 35% more loot. But if your build has not 50%, but rather 46% item's quantity, you will only find 2-3% less loot than me, and believe me, it's not a big deal. It is better to save your divine orbs and buy something more useful than an expensive Venter's Gamble. Next up is a new amulet. I need a level 85 base with Shaper Influence. Alteration spam until I find T1 items quantity. Now I need an Agate Amulet at least level 75 with Redeemer Influence. Alteration spam until you find T1 Mana Reservation. But I was able to avoid Alteration Hell and bought this amulet. Just what I need. Now it's time for Awakener's Orb. The main thing is to make sure that each amulet has only one modifier with influence. That's a very bad result. Let's try to fix it. Unlucky. The amulet just got worse. It happens. I'll make another one later. Some of my viewers may say that this is quite a strange craft because quantity and mana reservation can be obtained on a shaper's amulet and you don't need to combine amulets. But getting two T1 modifiers is a very difficult challenge and I think this way is much easier. Well the last replacement is the helmet. Don't pay attention to this base with fractured plus one maximum power charges. It's expensive and you don't need it because we have enough damage without this helmet. You need a good rare helmet with dexterity, life, and resistances. For example, you can buy a fractured base like this. Use Deafening Essence of Torment until you get something like this. Benchcraft, life, and the helmet is ready. In combination with this Abyssal Jewel, we will have immunity to shock, which will help us a lot. And if we add a unique jewel like this, we will be immune to all elemental ailments. I think we've got the gear sorted out. Wait a minute. What about this belt, Mr. YouTuber? Is it possible to do MF without it? Now I'm going to say not a very popular opinion or even a hot take. But yes, you can start MF without a headhunter. Of course you will not be able to run very juicy maps and your speed and earnings will not be the same as if you had a headhunter. But you can start MF without it and on my channel there are many series from Zero to Hero where I showed how to budget magic find works and how to get a headhunter with entry level MF. The main thing is don't be greedy, pick content that fits your level and make sure to add to your build inspired learning and you will be fine. That's all for sure now and we can move on to the atlas and strategies that I have tried and that I want to recommend to you. But I want to warn you right off the bat that there will be only strategies for T16 maps, because what happens on T17 maps is some kind of clown fiesta. 
players find a broken strategy and then a few days later the developers nerf it and so on in a loop and to be honest i've even stopped following what is now the meta for t17 maps well just because i'm not interested in it at all so i used more casual strategies if you can call them so the first atlas looks like this and it's beyond delirium alva blight and blue altars I took the atlas from snap and modified it slightly but in general it's a relatively standard atlas for mf because its primary goal is to have as many monsters as possible on the map and with this task he copes 100 percent the map i chose was of course the defiled cathedral because the apothecary was my main target i used two divination scarabs scarab of monstrous lineage scarab of hunted traitors and beyonds on the map device but to be honest, I didn't get any really big lucky drops with this atlas, but that's probably just me having a bad day. It happens. Because I found 6 divination cards, 7 years bad luck, and statistically I should have found at least 1 apothecary divination card. But as I said before, it's just a bad day, and overall the strategy is very good because there are a lot of monsters on the map and a lot of loot drops from them. Also an important note, if you choose this atlas you need a headhunter and other good gear because 8 mods maps with beyond and delirium are quite difficult and for a budget MF it is an unreal challenge. The next atlas I tried is legion and burial chambers. This is a very good atlas and strategy for entry level MF because it has Nico and packed with energy which will greatly boost your character when you don't have a headhunter. Many people may be surprised that I recommend Legion because in this patch the developers have nerfed this mechanic. But that's not entirely true. Legion is the mechanic that summons a lot of rare monsters, and as you all know rare monsters have much better loot. And in this sense, nothing much has changed for Magic Find. If we add quantity multiplier from our gear and multiplier from Scarabs to Legion we can get a pretty good loot. And on top of that we will get a little bonus in the form of divine orbs from legion boxes and incubators i recommend using this atlas with burial chambers because on this map you can find the fortunate and the doctor besides it's a relatively open map and it's suitable for legion as an alternative you can consider the cemetery as for scarabs, it is 2 legion scarabs and 2 divination scarabs with legion on the map device. And the last atlas is defiled cathedral with back to basics. So far this is my favorite strategy that has brought me the most valuable loot. It is very simple but also very fun because our maps will have a lot of item quantity and rarity which in turn gives us a lot of good loot. And to tell you the truth, I would like to make a separate video about it, where there would be more detailed information after I ran more than 100 maps. For example, how much time I spent on it, how much loot I got, defiled cathedral versus cemetery, and other boring statistics that you like so much. So if you want to see such a video posted in the comments, and if I see that viewers will be interested in this topic, I will make a separate video and will think about how to make it not very boring. As for scarabs, these are 2 divination scarabs, 1 scarab of monstrous lineage, and 1 mysterious scarab. By the way you can find links to all the atlases in the description of this video. Also there will be a link to my uber strict plus loot filter for magic find. To summarize my magic find journey, I ended up with over 10 divine orbs per hour using these strategies. But I didn't do an exact count and this is only the income which includes a big drop, but without mage blood. Because mage blood is a very big lucky drop. And if you add scarabs and other loot it will be about 12 divines per hour. As you all know I don't chase the most broken strategies and I don't have a goal to earn 100 mirrors per league. I just play the game, do what I like and make a video about it and it's up to you to decide which build or strategy to choose. But for me it's quite a good result because it was fun and quite relaxing and for T16 maps you don't need a character with very expensive gear. And if you heard that T16 magic find is dead then don't believe it and don't bury T16 MF. Although if you want a whole screen of loot and one mirror per day then you should look towards T17 maps. 
but personally I don't care for it, at least not in the trade league. I guess this is a good time to end this video and this journey. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Thank you all for watching and commenting. I appreciate it. Also I will be very grateful for your likes and subscriptions. Bye everyone and see you in new videos.